the 22nd chapter of the book of Kings. And you might be thinking, really, what does it tell us, right? Other than there's a bunch of names that nobody can pronounce. <laughs> Dan did a great job, actually. There's a secret that I gave him. Right? There's a website out there that has pronunciation of biblical words. And Dan did a great job. This lesson tells us that Josiah is king. And Josiah becomes king when he is eight years old. He's a second grader. And he's king. And what else do we know about Josiah? What's the most important thing we know about Josiah? He's the, is he actually the son of David? It says in there that he, that he followed in the of David, right? Is David actually Josiah's father? And looking at many, we could look it up if we wanted to to figure out exactly how many grand sons Josiah is. Not actually David's son; he's an offspring of David. The important part is we know that Josiah followed after David, right? And David, he did and tried to do what God called him to do. He did what he needed to do, right? Did David do everything right? No. No. I don't know if your children will like that. <laughs> 26 years old, and he decides that he needs to help rebuild the temple. And so he sends to the priest, his secretary, and he sends to the high priest, to, to take an account of all of the money that's in the temple. And then he says, now once you've taken an account of it, hand it over to those who are doing the work. Because it doesn't matter what the expense is, we need to take care of God's house. It doesn't matter what else is happening or what else is going on. If we're not taking care of God's house, we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. So give the money to them. And I don't need an accounting of it because I know they're going to use it the right way. And then the high priest says he <coughs> finds, he found the book, right? Now remember, the kings before Josiah did what? They tore down the temple. They tore down the church. They did whatever they wanted to to meet their own needs. So they destroyed God's temple. And they set up altars to other gods. So now the high priest, when we have a king who's been serving for 18 years, who is walking in the way of David and doing what God wants him to do, finds a book. Do you get what I'm saying? When those who take care of worship for God have to keep things from the people. The people aren't being who they need to be. But when this book was found and was read by the secretary, it was taken back to the king, and the king was told that all of the money from the temple was given to those who are now building so that they can buy the timbers and the stones and all the stuff that they need. I worry about getting accounting from them, but the high priest found this book, and he read it to him. And we didn't get what happens next. But what happens in verse 11 of chapter 22 of 2 Kings? What does King Josiah do? Does anybody know? Other than the two preachers in the crowd. He tore his clothes. And what does that mean? It means he's mad. And he's repentant of all of the stuff that he heard read to him that they were not doing. Because they weren't following after God. And they weren't doing what God was leading them to do. They were going after their own wills and their own ways. They were doing what was best they thought was best for them. And not what God needed for them to do. So what roadmap are we following? This one which will still get us there. Even though it's... I have to find out when this guy actually was governor. They might know. 
Early 90s? Okay. I, it still works. And I'm, I'm glad you had it because it was a good, a good thing for the children's sermon. Right? But what map are we following? Are we following the map that we want to follow to the places that we want to go? Or are we following God's map? Are we reading this book and understanding it? Are we reading this book and applying it to our lives? Are we reading what this says that I need to do, even if it's not what I want to do? Even if it's not where I think I need to take what I'm doing? Is that what we're doing? Or are we following after our own desires and our own wills? Because that's the question this morning. This morning we end the church here on Christ the King Sunday, right? This is all about Christ coming and doing what Christ needs to do for us. It's all about God being who God is, loving us irregardless of which map we actually follow. Right? If we follow after our own wills, does God still love us? Yes. If we do what God wants us to, does God love us anymore? No. He still loves us. Right? So what are we following? What are we doing? Because see, this morning's scripture is really all about what matters or who matters. See, because every one of us has a God. We all have at least one. Maybe more. But which one is actually God of our lives? Right? Because this morning we see that the high priest found the book of the law, he found the scriptures, and he gave them over to the king. And the king decided that what they were doing was not what they should be doing. It's all about the direction we follow and what we do and how we do it and why we do it. Right? Because scripture rises above everything else in our lives and has to be central. We need to put God first in everything. Because God will lead us in the direction we need to go. So on this Christ the King Sunday, and knowing that Scripture needs to be the center of our lives, I have three questions for me, and then seven words. If Christ is true, what does that mean for how we live in our lives? If Christ is truly king of everything, how do we align our lives with what God has called us to do? Walking after the scripture and not doing what we think is best for us, but for what God is calling us to do and to be in the world. If Christ is truly king, what does that mean for how we spend our time and our resources? Whether or not we give money to things or what we give our money to. If Christ is truly king, what does that mean for how we live our lives in the world and get and for our neighbors? Right? Because the two greatest commandments are love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. And then second, love your neighbor as yourself. If, if Christ is truly king, how are we treating others that shows that Christ is truly king? Seven last words. That's kind of interesting, because there's how many last words from the cross? Seven. I'm not Jesus by any stretch of the imagination. Never will be. Never even get close. But I have seven last words for you. It's been six years that I've been the call pastor of this congregation. It has been. Actually, it is almost six. It'll be seven next January. You wish you could. You're supposed to be good at math. That's what she was saying. She goes back to seven. Since I've been here as the call leader of this congregation, we have seen some wonderful times and we have seen some not so wonderful times. It has been a joyous occasion for me to be the pastor to all people. To walk with you in your lives. To watch my children grow up. To become beautiful young women. Regardless of what happens beyond this, I know that God is with me. And that God is with you.
comes with you. There's one thing that I learned in that one of the things that got gets hammered home at being a Christo is how much God loves each and every one of us and needs each and every one of us to do something for him. So I know God has a call for me. And I know God has a way for this congregation, regardless of what happens and who is here and who is doing what. So my last seven words for you. We come from my house. And regardless of what else you hear, this is most important. God loves you. And so do I.